Today we're talking with Tony Stasiak, longtime head coach of the Lady Zebra Girls. How are you doing, Tony? Good, how are you? Good. I think Tony's in his 12th year now of being the head coach for the Lady Zebras. What we're going to talk about today is probably his most significant, or I don't know about significant, but one of your funner years, the 2004 uh, Lady Zebra basketball team that went on to win the state championship. Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to look back at how you got there. The year before, uh, 2003, the Lady Zebras suffered a pretty crushing loss in the regional final. Uh, do you have any remembrances of that game? <laughs> Not a lot of fond ones. No. Uh, the whole setup of the day, you know, we had uh, – won the sectional, so we're playing in a regional at Triton High School back then, and some really bad weather hit that night. Uh, so there's some talk about possibly delaying even the championship game, but they thought since uh, Boone Grove and us were in, relatively in that area that mm -hmm. we should still play it. And things were going pretty well. We had a five-point lead uh, with two minutes to go and consequently gave up a 10-0 run to end the game, one of those things where everything that went wrong that could go wrong did. Go uh, that was a team that only had one senior. Laura Whistler was the only senior. Uh, so we just, I don't think we're maybe necessarily ready for that. It was basketball, especially tournament basketball, such a momentum game. Mm -hmm. uh, Boone Grove got a couple turnovers, a couple layups. Uh, it's one of those things where you didn't have enough timeouts to possibly kind of right the ship. And next thing you know, we went home and lost with a five point loss. And that was, that was a crushing defeat, but um, you had a lot of hope because you had a, you know, just one senior that you lost and hope that that memory could, could spawn the next year, and it certainly did in a big way. I was going to say, what kind of impact do you think that loss had on uh, some of your returning kids that were coming back? Best story from that by far, and uh, some people may know it, but, uh, you know, Courtney Felke was a junior on the that first regional team and great player, I think, averaged about 18 points a game that year and, and really a driven, dedicated kid. Uh, wanted to play Division One basketball, and uh, we went home that night. And she went to bed and woke up on Sunday morning and decided on her uh, bedroom wall that she was going to paint the scoreboard from Triton High School from that previous night. So that every night when she went to bed, it was the last thing she saw. And every day she woke up, it was the first thing she saw. And that, you know, once I heard that when we got to school Monday, I knew we were in pretty good shape, and the goal was going to be pretty clear. Uh, when your best players are that focused and that driven, everybody else just kind of followed her lead. And like we said, we had a lot of returning kids mm -hmm. back the next year, and, and the focus was there to, to get back to the regional and take care of business and then see how far we could take it beyond there. So, so you're returning a team. You lose one player. You're in, I guess that would be, what, the final eight of the state, right. the regional final. Uh, what were your expectations going into 2004? Was were you were you dreaming state championship? Well, you know, everybody says that's that's the end goal, and all coaches of the season talk about that. But really, we thought we'd like to get to that regional. If we could get there, get past the regional championship. Once you make it semi-state under that for, that format, which is a one-game semi-state mm -hmm. and then a one-game state. You know, I thought the regional and still is the toughest part of the tournament, playing two games in one right. day. You don't do that anywhere else along the tournament. And, uh, you know, we thought if we could get back to that point, once you make it semi-state, it's anybody's game. And we thought if we could get to that point, knowing that semi-state was also at Plymouth the next year, it would be a little bit closer than, than Rensselaer, which is where the regional was in 2004, that if we could get back to the semi-state, maybe get a home crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, it certainly turned out that way. But if we could get there, we certainly were thinking about it. But we knew we had a long way to go. It's a long season. Uh, we had a great season, really. The, the only two losses were on the same day in that 2003-2004 season up at a South Bend Holiday Tournament to uh, South Bend Riley, which was good. Mm -hmm. They were going through their best years at that point. And in the consolation, uh, as events would have it, we lost to Canoe Valley in the consolation game. Uh, and uh, fortunately, though, when it mattered for the TRC, we came back and beat them uh, in January. But those were only two losses that day. Same day. Same day, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we did a pretty good job, obviously, of taking care of business all the way through. We, uh, you know, it was our highest scoring team we'd ever had. It was really a complete group. We had size, we had speed, we had interchangeable parts. Uh, certainly with Courtney's leadership, that helped a lot and with her athletic ability. But um, even to this day, if you could put together a team, that team had every single thing you possibly could need. Uh, for me as a coach, I was just hoping just not to screw it up, just not stay <laughs> in their way uh, because there was a lot of talent, a lot of expectations, none more than we put on ourselves. You know, each and every day, with a loss like that the year before, each and every day became important. That was a team that never, you know, that, that consolation game in, in Valley, that didn't go well, which was a nice time because we were 10-0, and played in that South Bend tournament, lost in the morning game to South Bend Riley, 
kind of wore out because they were very athletic and kind of ran us a little bit and then just didn't have a good perspective when we came and played Valley and they really thumped us that day mm -hmm. and when we came home uh, the other thing I'll never forget is when we came home on that bus after losing twice in that day uh, the seniors came to me and said coach we want to practice harder uh, this isn't enough for us. We don't like this feeling of losing. Uh, we want you to feel free to ratchet up the practices. We we, we don't like losing. We want to we want to um, you know get as far as we can this year, and that's rare. I mean, how how much do you hear kids say, Coach? We want to be challenged more. We want you to practice us harder, practice us longer, and uh, to reach that goal. And uh, we certainly did. And of course, we never lost the rest of the year either. Now. Um so often, and as we uh, were talking to all three coaches who had state championships run through uh, Rochester, so often there's a game or two in that sectional, regional uh, buildup that can go either way. So, I mean, uh, to win a championship, you also need maybe just a touch of luck, the ball to bounce the right way. I was looking back at your scores. The first sectional game, the state championship season, 51-49 Zebras over Judson. What do you remember about that game? <laughs> Could have ended really quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I agree. Uh, to win a championship, to win those many games in a row, mm -hmm. you need you need to be fortunate. I mean, anybody will tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anything where it's a one and done scenario, you need some breaks along the way. And uh, if you look at the tournament run, our closest games were teams that had played us traditionally. Uh, we lost a, or we beat Judson uh, by two. Winnemac was a close game. We pulled away late, mm -hmm. and then the regional championship Bremen was also a close game. The teams that we hadn't played before, didn't know anything about us, only saw us on tape. Uh, Wheeler and uh, Garrett mm -hmm. and Heritage Christian. Um, you know, you couldn't. It's one of those things. Maybe it didn't quite do us justice, or nobody really believed us mm -hmm. outside our area. Mm -hmm. But our toughest competition were the teams that had played us before. Uh, that Judson game, they had a shot at the end, less than five seconds to go. They got a, a look that would have tied it, and we got uh, defense defensive rebound or things could have been much, much different. And uh, that was a great ball game. And it really set up something that was neat for our state run. And then the next year, um, Judson went to state the following year. Well, after we beat Judson on that Friday night, uh, Coach Hampton, who's still there, and I got to be pretty good friends. Their team followed us all the rest of the tournament. They came to all our games, sat together, cheered for us, wore Rochester stuff. And then the next year, things didn't work out that well for us, uh, but we kind of returned the favor, and our kids uh, really valued that. And I certainly have a good relationship with Coach Hampton, and we followed them all the way through. A lot of our kids went and, and followed that tournament path for North Judson. Uh, so that was a neat thing that uh, you see the good parts that don't get talked enough about high school athletics, the fact that you kind of build those relationships. But that was a nail biter that went down, and if you look back today, it could have been over yeah. in, in the first night of the and, tournament. It's going to be remembered as Rochester's greatest female basketball team. It could have been an easily forgotten season. That's yeah. how uh, too bad that that state tournament does that to teams, mm -hmm. but uh, it was that close. Yeah. I remember going to the Bremen game, and that's kind of uh, where the year before, like you said, the regional final, things had fell apart late. And, and a little bit in that Bremen game, things were kind of coming unraveled late too. And uh, he held on for a big win, and then from then on, it was smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Wheeler game in the morning, uh, I'll never forget. You know, we had, had seen a lot of junk defenses against Courtney mm -hmm. um, through a lot of the season, and I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but Wheeler decided to come out and just basic man-to-man, -man and, and Courtney had a great game. I think she had about 30 points that night or that afternoon. That was the morning game, and we handled Wheeler fairly easily. Mm -hmm which featured a future Notre Dame player. Becca Bruschewski was a oh, freshman really? on that team I and a uh, freshman starter, and her sister was a senior, and they were kind of the tandem. And mm -hmm. our post players did a great job on those two uh, and kind of held them in check, and, and we had just had a great night. So things went really easy in the morning. And then Bremen uh, won in a close game. Uh, they played the second game, and, of course, we had some experience with Bremen. We had played them earlier in the year and scored 50 points in the first half against Bremen, oh handled gosh. them fairly easily. Um, they played a regular zone, and I remember I think we hit about eight threes in the first half. Um, so you're always worried about mm -hmm. having so much success early on, and then we were at that magical regional championship game again. Got off to a decent start, was playing well, had some foul trouble. They obviously keyed on Courtney. Uh, Aubrey Rowe had a big game, as I remember back then, and uh, that was the thing. And teams could do all they could against Courtney, but she was an unselfish, pa unselfish passer, set everybody else up, and everybody kind of just filled their roles, uh, whatever it needed to be. So we were tough to play those kinds of gimmick defenses against just for that reason. Uh, but you're right, we had a somewhat comfortable lead at one point in the fourth quarter, and then mm -hmm. things kind of fell apart a little bit, and you could kind of see a couple timeouts. It was this, okay, here we are again, girls. Is this going to happen? And as usually what happens, uh, you know, 
the senior leadership, not just Courtney, but uh, we had six seniors on that team, kind of held on at the end, made just enough free throws and made just enough plays. Bremen had a shot, but we played pretty good defense on the final possession as well, and uh, we're able to hold on. And then, and then you're right, we go into the semi-state and uh, play a very good Garrett team, mm -hmm. and that game wasn't even really that close. Uh, you know, the thing I remember from there, I think the mark is still in Plymouth Gym where you have the Pilgrims logo, which is right by the coach's bench. Courtney hit a three to seal it from about 25 feet. And, uh, you know, it seemed like the whole town of Rochester was there. Garrett had a nice following, but that Plymouth Gym was packed. And I remember when she hit that three and it looked like we were going to win, that place just erupted. And you didn't see that, unfortunately, in the state finals because of the environment at Conseco. Mm -hmm. It's a, kind of a dull noise. We had a lot of crowd. We mm -hmm. could hear it. But uh, in a high school gym with the acoustics, uh, that was as loud as a gym as I'd ever heard. Yeah. It just was so ironic because uh, Plymouth has been the gym that's had some bad things for Rochester over the years, but uh, one of the, the – you know, really good things that's ever happened was that day in that gym. And you're right, I think the whole town was in that gym yeah. at one time. So now we, uh, we lead up to the, the uh, state championship game. You're playing a 21-5 Heritage Christian team. I think it's a second year in existence as a school. Had a big, powerful uh, post player. Mm -hmm. And wasn't that the coach's daughter? Yeah, Hannah there? Richards. Yes. And Mark Richards was the head coach. Yeah. So uh, what was your thoughts going into that game? Well, you know, you have that sort of that Indianapolis mentality. I think you still see it, I think, within Marion County that that's all that exists in high school basketball sports. I mean, right. there's always, you know, there are a lot of 4A schools, and, and they, uh, I don't think when they saw us, you know, little Rochester come in that, that I don't know if they overlooked us or, or what, but I know when we got down there on Friday, we stayed Friday night at a hotel in the Indianapolis area and got a chance to catch some of the news coverage. Everything was almost coronating. Heritage Christian is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this was just a formality. They played a tougher schedule, and, you know, this has been something they're building for because really that group of kids, uh, as we found out, played together in area middle schools in Indianapolis and then all came in together, Heritage Christian, uh, for this express purpose. and, and they they had an all-state player as well, a uh, girl that went to uh, Indiana State. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, you know we knew just from watching them on tape that uh, they were somewhat traditional in what they did. Uh, Jamie Fornell did an outstanding job. We shadowed their all-state player uh, all game long with Jamie, and she did a phenomenal job. And we also noticed uh, that their fifth player didn't really do much watching it on tape. So we kind of devised a plan where Courtney didn't really guard anybody. She was kind of free to roam and help on uh, their post player and their all-state player. So we kind of doubled those two whenever they had it. And, uh, you know, it was a, a nice move that worked out because, um, you know, she that girl never did uh, even take a shot in the state championship game and allowed us to keep their two star players under check. And then for our standpoint, uh, you know, we were able to kind of Courtney had an excellent game. It's a different environment, different shooting mm -hmm. environment. We didn't shoot the ball as well as we wanted to. You see a lot of teams say that because mm -hmm. you're used to high school background and now you're going to a professional arena. But it was definitely a defensive struggle and a dogfight from start to finish. Okay. Okay, so let's enjoy the uh, first half of the Rochester versus Heritage Christian 2004 state championship game. Welcome back to Conseco Fieldhouse. Howard Kelman, Jane Schott, game number two. Heritage, Christian, and Rochester. And Jane, we're looking at two young teams. Absolutely. These two teams, neither of them got past the regionals last year, so they don't have the state finals experience, but both Heritage Christian and Rochester have had excellent seasons. Their coach is bringing them to this point. Very excited for this matchup this afternoon. And we'll be back with more pregame info. First, we'll pause for these words. You're watching Lassie Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. We're back at Conseco Fieldhouse, Heritage Christian, the Lady Eagles versus the Rochester Lady Zebra, Zebras. And let's go to the key players, Jane. Start with Heritage Christian, the visiting team. 
Well, the key players for Heritage Christian, Cassie Freeman being the first one. You can see her stats, 20 points a game, 48% from the field, and averages nearly eight rebounds a game. Her force inside next to her, Hannah Richards, also a post player, 13 points a game and 60% from the field. So those are the two key players for Heritage Christian. As far as their keys to the game, they need to stay out of foul trouble. They are not as deep as Rochester. So to keep those two out of foul trouble is very important. They also need to stay focused and execute on offense in order to take out their game plan. And, in, and then finally, they've got to get the ball into Richards and Freeman because that's where the primary of their scoring comes from. Okay. For Rochester, their key players, they've got a great player in Courtney Felke. Felke averages 22 points a game. She shoots 47% from the field and has an all-around excellent game because she also averages six assists a game. She's very important for the Zebras. However, Riley Carr, a sophomore guard who runs alongside of her, is just as important. She shoots 40%, 41% from the field, 75 from the free throw line, and averages nearly 11 points a game. Those are the two key performers for the Rochester Zebras. The keys for Rochester to come out with a win, they've got to be aggressive on offense. They play an attacking style, and they have got to attack Heritage Christian to try to get them in foul trouble. Secondly, they need to contain the size inside, which is Freeman and Richard. Rochester does not match up very well with that size, so they've got to try to contain it. And finally, they have got to get Kristen Felke the basketball in order for them to be successful because she's their go-to player. Okay, Jane, let's go to PA announcer Scott Gregg with the starting lineups. Number 20, Courtney Turner. Number 23, Nicole Roush. Number 31, Cassie Hendricks. Number 40, Lindsay Dixon. Number 42, Bree Jones. Number 43, Sarah Butterell. And the starting lineup for the Eagles of Heritage Christian. And one guard, a 5'7'8'' senior, number 10, Ginger Kreidel. And a guard, a 5'9'' junior, number 21, Lauren Hefner. And a forward, a 5'10'' senior, number 22, Cassie Freeman. Forward of 5 foot 8 inch senior number 30, Steph Foley. And the center of 5 foot 11 inch senior number 44, Hannah Richards. The head coach of the Eagles of Heritage Christian, Dr. Mark Richards. Hey! 
Okay, Jane, tell us how these teams got here. Well, Heritage Christian came through the Speedway sectional. They defeated Indian Creek very well, 72 to 47, and Triton Central 31 to 27. That led them into the Indian Creek Regional, where they have defeated Switzerland County 59-48 and took on a very fine Shenandoah club and beat them handily 40 to 25. Finally, Southridge Semi-State, they beat North Knox 45 to 43. Rochester had a little tough road. Bo Justin beat them 40-51-49 in sectional and Winamax 73-62. They went to the Rensselaer Regional where they beat Rin Wheeler and Bremen and finally through the semi-state to, to take on Garrett. Anna Richards and Jenna Easterday will jump center. The officials are Mike Weisnora, Kim Yelich, and Alan Deskin. And the tip controlled by Heritage Christian. This is Cassie Freeman, and she's a terrific player. Definitely. She averages 20 points a game. Very formidable foe for Rochester. They've got to find a way to slow her down. That's Hannah Richards, the daughter of coach Dr. Mark Richards. As Freeman misses the shot in the opening moment of the 2A championship game. Tries Central defeated Washington Catholic. 46-36 to win its second straight 1A title. So here's Rochester. Work the ball down low. Easterday's shot does not go. And a good look at the basket that time attacking the 1-2-2 from Heritage Christian. Hafner missing a three. And the rebound taken down by Easterday. Who's averaging better than 22 points a game. Belke has really played well in this tournament as well. She seems to step up in major games, and you cannot find a more major game than this one the state finals. One of Heritage Christian's losses, and they've only lost five games, was to Brook Up. We'll be playing in their 3A championship game tonight. Ginger Cridle. Work it right side to Cassie Freeman. Freeman, by the way, will be going to Butler. And Butler won last night in its tournament to advance. And the pass is intercepted. Felke. And the rebound to Hannah Richards. It is 2-0 Rochester. 6.08 to go in the first quarter. Heritage Christian ball. Rochester's only lost two games all season. To South Bend Riley. And to Tiffy Canoe Valley. Those are the two Rochester losses. And a spinning move. And Felke, fouled in the act of shooting, will shoot two. Courtney Felke, an excellent player. Rochester trying to get her the basketball early. She gets the ball on her own quite often. You've already seen her pick up a steal against Heritage Christian, trying to get the basketball inside to Richards. Felke grabs the ball and takes off for the other end. This time she attacks the basket. That's an important part of Rochester's game, trying to attack the basket. And you see she takes her off the dribble and goes up strong for a shot. Once she got the first step on the defender, she's able to get her way to the basket and picks up the free throw. Bumpy makes it both. Ginger Crido committed the personal. And it's 4 nothing Rochester. With each Dr. Mark Richards, the, Richards, the head coach of Heritage Christian. Position family practice in his fourth year. Tony Stasiak, the head coach of Rochester, a teacher, world history and geography. Heritage Christian has a lot of size inside with Richards and Freeman, but you'll notice that Freeman finds her way to the outside a lot of times, and that frees up the space inside for Anna Richards to go to the basket as you see her go strong to the hole. Gets the basket, 
He goes to the free throw line, and on that, you see Easter Day trying to keep up with it, Richards, but she just cannot defend the big center inside. A very good move by Hannah Richards on the drop set. She is averaging 13.8 a game. She'll be going to Bethel College. Good follow. And the basket by Casey. Ends up being a four-point play because of the missed free throw. One thing Rochester has to do is keep Heritage Christian off the board. It is Rochester ball. We're tied at four. And that jump doesn't go, and Ginger Crito has the rebound. Cassie Freeman. Rebound, Aubrey Rowe. Here come the Zebras. The old cross court pass right there. Looking to reverse right now. Her Eagles are in a 1 2 2 zone. So Rochester trying to attack that zone. The best way to do it is to get the ball to Courtney Feldy. She lights it up from the outside. A triple for the senior guard. Courtney Felky with a three and traveling is the call. Dr. Mark Richards of Heritage Christian spoke about what it's like coaching your daughter in the state finals. I think it adds a little bit uh, more enjoyment uh, to the, the situation. Um, my family's uh, very close, and basketball has always been uh, a major part of the family. And, uh, just uh, something I'm sure I would like to do. Richards, the head coach of Heritage Christian, talking about his daughter, daughter here. So, the basket there by Jamie Fordle. And it's 9-4, Rochester. Rochester picking up full court. Trying to make this a full court game so that Heritage Christian can't get the ball inside to their big post players. Here's Lauren Hafner over to Hannah Richards. Backing in. Pass deflected, but they maintain possession. This is Cassie Freeman. Ginger Prado's got it. Lauren Hafner. Battle for that rebound. Will pause for these words. You're watching the C Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. Rochester leading nine to four. Word about the great people at Mike Anderson Chrysler Dodge and Jeep in Rochester. Everybody's welcome at Mike Anderson Chrysler Dodge and Jeep. Say hello to General Manager Bill Thompson. It is Heritage Christian Ball, and they've only been in the IHSAA for two years now. Relatively well, inexperienced club in that respect. These kids have played a lot of basketball, though, which Mark Richards is very happy to be here. The empathy of his program. Anna Richards scores, and now it's 9-6. to six. They also had a great year last year, 23 two a year ago, 21-5 this year. And it's in and out. And the rebound taken down by Hannah Richards. Steph Foley. Now get out of that corner. And inside, they find Laura Hafner, but she missed the shot. After struggling from the field early on, Heritage Christian, three for nine so far this afternoon. And the short jump is good by Jimmy Ford, the 5'9 senior. 2.09 to go in the first quarter, 11 to 6, Rochester. There it is, Christian Ball. There is Christian with 11 consecutive victories. There's Hannah Richards. There it is, Christian located in Indianapolis. 485 students. Rochester, northern part of the state, Fulton County. 541 students in Rochester. Rochester doing a great job defensively. They are keying on Freeman and Richards, and Courtney Felke right now is guarding Lauren Hafner, and she is laying off Hafner, giving her the jump shot. Felke then is freed up to help out on Richards and Freeman whenever need be, and it's effective so far. 
And that does not go for Lauren Hafner. And here comes Rochester. That's Courtney Felke. And a very nice move. Didn't convert. Try to follow her own shot. And Rochester maintains possession. Felke is just such a smooth ball handler. She can get to the basket because she's got a lot of dribble drive moves. Heritage Christian has got to keep her out of the paint if they want to contend defensively. It is Rochester ball, 1.15 to go in the first quarter. And the spinning turnaround jump by Jamie Formal. She's got two quick buckets here. Well, she's got six total. She has really stepped up here in the first quarter for Rochester. Timeout. Timeout. We'll stay right here. And the Rochester coach, Tony Stasiak, told us how he's turned the Zebras into a winning program. Uh, our program is really focused on uh, developing guards. You know, our program really attack is centered around good guard play. And this year I think the difference is our post players have come around and we've really added that you know, to, our, to our arsenal. Uh, it's been a pretty attacking style, getting the ball up and down the floor and playing a lot of people. And I think that's, that's been one of the key uh, reasons for our success, particularly in tournament finals. Even though we have five solid starters, we've had key people from the bench from time to time that have come in and hit some really big shots and made some really big defensive play. A word about the town of Rochester, 1998 Community of the Year, four-star schools, beautiful Lake Manitou, a rich rural lifestyle, state-of-the-art library. A little more about that later. It is Heritage Christian Ball, and traveling is the call. So he stayed there talking about how they're going to play a full court game and attack. Right there, they put on the full court pressure, a little 2 2 1. Heritage Christian needs to handle that pressure to get into the half court and get back to playing their game. And another turnover with 55 seconds left in the first quarter. Anna Richards helping out with the ball. Rochester on a 9 to 2 run. And that is Ginger Crider. Inside, Steph Foley did not convert. And a foul. Lindsay Dishman is going to pick up that foul for first. On the rebound, Steph Foley makes a nice cut to the basket. Didn't get to convert on the shot, but was able to grab her rebound and draw the foul. Steph Foley inbounding to Cassie Freeman. And there is Ginger Cridal. Out to Lauren Hatton. Ball to Fluffett. Nice defensive play. And Rochester's got it back. Ten is Raleigh Carr. Talkie's shot doesn't go. The foul is rejected. And here's a foul. And that may be on Riley Carr. There is Dr. Mark Richards. We talked about Rochester's Courtney Felke, and yes, she is a great player. But the rest of their team has been instrumental in getting the Zebras here this far. And that is the end of the first quarter. The score, Rochester 13, Heritage Christian 6. You're watching the C-Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. Rochester leading 13 to 6. Rochester's got a locally owned independent telephone company, two golf courses, a state park, a skate park, a jet port with a 5,000 foot runway, full service oldies radio station, family owned daily newspaper, unique shopping opportunities, local county hospital, Rochester the right choice. It is Rochester ball will begin the second quarter. And that rebound taken down by Hannah Richards. Only four players have scored in this afternoon ball game. Two for Rochester, two for Heritage Christian. And you'd expect.
like the people from Heritage Christian, Freeman and Richards has all their points, even though it's only six. Those are the two inside players that have all their points. And they've got to get it going. That's a very nice pass by Richards, and the shot is good by Laura Cameron. They have been daring Hafner to shoot the basketball all afternoon. That's her first make on five attempts so far. They're letting her wide open. If she can step up, it will help the Eagles. There's a good example of how important it is as Courtney Funky misses to be a good passing center. Definitely. They're doubling down on Richards. She's getting a lot of attention inside. She can kick it out to the open shooter. It is Heritage Christian ball. There's Richards. She's deep, and she's fouled, and she'll shoot two. Well, speaking of passing centers, Freeman's not the center, but she is a forward, and that's a little post-to-post, high-low look. You see Freeman up top, dumping it down into her front court mate, Hannah Richards. She gets a nice drop step, doesn't get the basket, but she draws the foul. Jenner Easterday commits the personal. So Richards makes the free throw. Richards is a 60% free throw shooter. She averages nearly 14 points a game and seven boards. She's a very good inside post presence. And for Rochester, Nancy Green checks in, replacing Jenna Easterday, who leaves with two personals. Easterday looked a little bit nervous. She's missed quite a few shots. And now that deep bench that Tony Stasiak has bragged about is going to have to come through for the Zebras. And the ball goes off her hands. Off the hands of Morgan Thomas. And a turnover committed by Rochester. It is Heritage Christian Ball. This place is loud. Absolutely. Heritage Christian's fans are willing their team back into this ball game. They're on a 4 nothing run right now. They were down by 7 at the quarter, and they closed that gap to 13-10. Cassie Freeman was triple team. And that's an over and back. Well, it's a good look for it by Freeman. She just passed it a little bit too hard, right over top of Cornell, or uh, excuse me, right over top of Hafner's hands. Hafner's their most athletic, and she couldn't sky high enough to get the ball. You saw Riley Carr just check back into the game, as well as Jamie Fornell. And that's Fornell, and a good rebound by Hannah Richards. That's Cornell's first miss of the game. She started the game three for three on fire. 5.55 to go, first half. 13-10. Rochester was 13-6 at the quarter. Here's Ginger Cridle. Richards is deep, and she scores. It's the jumper. She now has nine points. And Rochester leads 15 to 12. The Zebra's first two points, Jane, of the second quarter. Great shot by Felke. You expect your star to step up, and that was a huge shot. Over top of defense, fading to her left. Knocks down a tough one. Here's Ginger Kreider, and a very nice move. She got by. She had to step it. Didn't make the shot. Quite often you say she got the step and she got the bucket. Just didn't make the shot. Out of bounds to Rochester. I think Heritage Christian Nat needs to take the ball to the basket against this Rochester defense. Here's Riley Carr. And a foul. Nice pass by Carr. She does the penetration and draws Richards just enough away from the basket. So as she dumps it down inside to her teammate, Cassie Greaves, Richards trying to recover, got the blocking foul, and that sends Greaves to the free throw line. Okay, so Hannah Richards commits the personal. It is her first personal. Cassie Greaves at the free throw line. She makes them both. And Rochester leads 17 to 12. 
is Ginger Kreidel. Over it goes to Cassie Freeman. Heritage Christian really having difficulty against this Rochester defense, trying to figure out what to do. Courtney Felky just laying off and helping out. She's like a floater on defense, helping out wherever need be. That's Lauren Hafner over to Hannah Richards. Played Freeman and Richards. They've got quite a one-two punch there. And that is Freeman. Here comes Courtney Felke. That's a three. Does not go for Aubrey Rowe. And a whistle inside and a foul. Dr. Mark Richards, coach of the Lady Eagles. That's a big foul on Hannah Richards, her second personal. We talked about the Eagles' depth. They are not as deep as Rochester. And now Richards has got to go out of the basketball game. That's almost 14 points a game, seven rebounds a game going out. And she is replaced. It is Rochester ball. Now, do you think they keep... Dr. Mark Richards will keep his daughter Hannah on the bench for the remainder of the second quarter. Well, I think that they'll uh, try to milk a couple minutes here, see how Heritage Christian does without her in the basketball game. Rowe rebounds. Felkie's missed shot. Timeout will pause for these words. You're watching the season four of the IHSA Television Network. to 12, 3.57 to go in the second quarter. Methodist Sports Medicine Center, a Clarion Health partner, provides sports medicine coverage for more than 25 Indiana high schools and is the official sports medicine provider of the IHSAA and state championship events. Methodist Sports Medicine Center keeps you in the game. It is Heritage Christian Ball. 21, Lauren Hafner. 3.44 to go second quarter. Rochester leading by five. Cassie Freeman. And the follow. Cassie Freeman struggling a little bit here early on. With that shot, she is now two for seven from the field for four points. She's averaging 20 a game as Courtney Felke misses her three. Courtney Felke to go to the University of Evansville. Cassie Freeman to Butler. Well, Freeman is the Eagles' leading scorer. She's got four so far. Felke is the Zebras' leading scorer. Felke shooting three for eight on the afternoon for nine points thus far. Felke averaging 22.2 and 6.4 assists a game as well. And Freeman spins, shoots, doesn't make it. Ball out of bounds. Freeman shooting 48% from the field this season, and as we said, 20 points per game. Dr. Mark Richards with a look of concern a moment ago. Well, Cassie Freeman's going to have to step up her offensive output simply because the front court mate Hannah Richards on the bench with two fouls, and Dr. Mark Richards opting to keep her out so far here in the second quarter. Each team has started to say it's committing five turnovers. That is Heritage Christian's sixth turnover. Heritage Christian has a player named Nicole Rausch, and her father, Jeff, is the general manager of Tom Rausch, Lincoln, Mercury, Mazda. And Rochester has a player named Randall Heidi, and her mother, Allison Heidi, the executive director of the Rochester Chamber of Commerce. That's a three that does not go. And Jessica Hendricks rebounds. Here is Ginger Cridle. Working left side of Jessica Hendricks. Cassie Freeman. Number 12 is Jessica Hendricks. 
A minute 58 left second quarter. Heritage Christian ball. They're down by three. Heritage Christian trying to get the ball to Kathy Freeman, but she is drawing a lot of attention from the Zebras. And what you do away from the ball is so important. Friday. Off balance, and she hits. Ginger Friday, a 5 7 senior. Good score for her on the penetration. With Richards on the bench, she needs to step up because right now they're having difficulty getting Freeman the basketball. That cuts the lead to one. That's a three. That does not go by Riley Carr. And here are the Lady Eagles with a chance to go ahead. And a baseline move, but Jessica Hendricks did not make the shot. It was a good drive by Hendricks. Hendricks, the junior, taking the ball hard to the basket. And we mentioned the fact that Heritage Christian had a chance to go ahead. They haven't let us yet. That's something that uh, and they've been able to keep in this basketball game. Their defense has held pretty well here in the second quarter. Rochester scoring very 13 points in the first quarter has only scored four here in the second and for less than a minute. Lauren Hafner back in there for Heritage Christian. And Heritage Christian gets it back on the turnover. He passing the general manager of TV40 is in the house today. Seated courtside. There's Cassie Freeman. With 41 seconds left in the second quarter. Hafner back outside to Dixon. This is Ginger Prido. Heritage Christian down by one. The Lady Eagles have not led in the game, and they may play for the last shot. We'll see. There are 22 seconds left in the half. They look to be working the basketball around, letting the clock run down. I think this is a smart move by Dr. Mark Richards. Now they're going to try to free up for, uh, Freeman if they can and get her the basketball. Prido's got it. Prido with a good percentage shot. Didn't make it, though. Four seconds. That will count if it goes, and you're almost killed by Courtney Felky, and that is the end of the first half with the score. Rochester is leading. Rochester ahead, 17 to 16. Here at Conseco, Price Central won the first game, 46 to 36. Let's go to Craig Wallace. All right, thank you very much, guys. And we're here with Coach Richards. And Coach, I thought you did an especially good job in that first half with a short bench. Hannah, on the bench, you made up some ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, the other girls came in, did just what I wanted them to do, come in, make a couple defensive plays, and handle the ball. Any adjustment in the second half for you? No, I think we'll be, we'll try to continue to push the ball inside. Some of my girls got a little anxious early in the game, and, and that's what will put us in a hole. Uh, we'll correct that and we'll win the second half. All right, nice first half, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, Howard, Jane, back to you. Hey. Thank you very much, Craig. We'll pause for these words. You're watching the Sea Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. Okay, now it's halftime. Uh, Zebras are up 17-16. What, what is your impressions of uh, the first half? Well, the first thing you remember is it's just a whole different environment in that game. There's TV timeouts, uh, so you have to manage your timeouts and understand that uh, the under first dead ball under four, you had TV timeouts, so that's a little helpful. You get a little extra time uh, for that, and also the as you're leaving the floor, there's the media, just like you see in the professional sports. You're pulled aside, so uh, they don't start the clock until you're off the floor, so there's a longer gap than you had. Uh, really no panic. It is as shocking as people might find that because we did score a lot of points. We had stress. I had stressed all year long that our defense was kind of underrated and, and we could play it when we needed to when we absolutely had to have it. And so we were actually looking forward to, to kind of showing our defense and we thought, especially as I said earlier, with our defensive alignment that we had planned, that, that was something that they hadn't seen and, and uh, we weren't scoring a lot, but I thought we had good shots, good looks. Nobody panicked. Uh, we were in the nice NBA professional mm -hmm. locker room, so we kind of, you know, 
relax a little bit, but it wasn't change anything. It's kind of stick with the program. We're playing great defense, uh, just the confidence that the shots would fall. And they weren't really necessarily taking anything away. There wasn't anything surprising on their end. We just thought if we could just stick with things, uh, that the second half things would turn out well. We knew, expected it to be a dogfight. It wasn't surprising that it was close. A lot of people may have been alarmed that it was such a low score, mm -hmm. but we thought as long as our defense was playing well, it always gives you a chance to win in the end. Now, did you uh, were you worried about the girls' nerves, or do you think they were all under control by halftime? Well, that's the other neat thing about the story from the state is, uh, we, as I said earlier, we stayed at a hotel the night before, and uh, we were going to go watch the movie Miracle. It came out at that time, mm -hmm. but the hotel, the uh, movie theater by the hotel didn't have it. The, uh, the hotel's listings were wrong, so we couldn't see that. So we ended up going back and uh, got a, um, just kind of hung out in the rooms area. And then I told the girls we wanted to watch the 1A game because I thought it was important to be in that atmosphere to see how things were before they played. Some teams just like to show up and play, but I wanted them to kind of soak in the environment, get used to it, what it was like, what the crowd noise was like, but also to really enjoy the, the moment of being there too. Um, so I think we said said uh, the 1A game started at 10, said, you know, be ready to go by 9 o'clock, and, and we were going to get a police escort, so it wasn't mm -hmm. going to take that long. Well, at about 8 o'clock, of course, in the morning, I'm awake. I'm a bundle of nerves. Sure. You know, it's a state championship, and, uh, you know, I'm awake and ready to go, and there's a knock at my door, and this is an hour before they're supposed to be ready. And I open the door, and it's the entire team dressed and ready to go, and they said, Coach, we're ready to win today. And uh, really, from that moment on, uh, I was calm and cool the rest of the day because there's all those little things that happened for a reason along the way, and that was another sign that, like, it's meant to be, you know, that uh, you can only do so much as a coach and then you turn it over to the team and that was a phenomenal sign. So, you know, we got to the 1A game. Uh, they saw the lights go down for the 1A introductions. It was a good game. They got to kind of do look around, see what it was like, but also at the same time be comfortable in the environment. So at halftime, like we said, it was a one point game, but you know, there was no panic. Uh, this was the thing, the moment that we'd waited for. We were only 16 minutes away, and we just had to make sure that we continued to play that great defense. And you know, hopefully we could do something we were uh, proud of all year long, which is get to the free throw line. This was uh, one of the better free throw shooting teams we'd ever had, and that had been a big weapon for us. And we thought if we could continue to get the ball inside with drives and post feeds, that maybe we could get to the line in the second half, maybe wear them out, and uh, hopefully bring it home at the end. All right. Well, let's watch the second half and see uh, what happens. Third quarter, Jane, a very low scoring first half. And partly due to the fact that both teams not shooting the basketball particularly well this afternoon. Heritage Christian a little bit better, 7 for 21 with 33%. Rochester really struggling, 6 for 22 for 27%. And from behind the arc, Rochester is just 1 of 6 for 17% on the afternoon. And Rochester is the highest scoring team in the finals averaging 64 points a game. Well, you would expect a little bit of that tension here at the state finals. Uh, I thought they came out and set the tone early, had a great first quarter, but they went cold due to Heritage Christian's defense. Rochester hasn't scored in over five minutes. Now we begin the third quarter. That's Ginger Cridle of Heritage Christian out to Steph Foley. Rochester leading 17 to 16. Heritage Christian has not led. Freeman. And the rebound taken down by Aubrey Rowe. Talked about Freeman in the first half. She has really struggled from the field. That missed field goal makes her two for nine in the afternoon. Steph Foley knocked it out of bounds and Cassie averaging 20 points a game. And a good defensive play by Lauren Hafner. Knocked the ball away. Here's Ginger Crider in the opening moment of the third quarter. Hannah Richards playing with two personals. She's got the ball. She sat out the last four minutes of the second quarter with those two fouls. That's when Heritage Christian actually made their run. They stepped up their defensive intensity with a smaller lineup, and Rochester really struggled. And the pass by Foley is deflected. There's a foul. Good defensive play by Riley Carr, a sophomore guard. Tony Stasiak talked about how she needed to have a big game this afternoon. She's kind of Courtney Felke's running mate, and Carr has been very, very quiet here in the first half. She is 0 for 3 from the field so far, has not scored, so far maybe the first half jitters has gotten to the sophomore. Steph Foley committed the personal at the other end. 
Easter Day shot does not go. And we have another foul. Easter Day, another sophomore who has struggled. She's over four this afternoon. She averages nearly 10 points a game. Six thirty-six to go in the third quarter. Rochester picks up full court defense right now. Cassie Greaves checks in for Rochester, replacing Jenna Easterday. Heritage ball. Hafner work it to Kreidel. This is Ginger Kreidel. And the rebound is all Rochester. Taken by Cassie Greaves. And the missed shot by Foreman. And here come the Lady Eagles. 22 is Cassie Freeman. Outside the Ginger Crider. And a long one by Freeman. Does not go. And the ball knocked away from Crider from behind. Knocking it away from Riley Carr. They're the halftime stats, Gene. And they're fairly even. Both teams shooting 33%, 27%. Teams from the free throw line shooting well. Right now, Rochester out rebounding Heritage Christian 17 to 14. Both teams have two turn or six turnovers. We've played over two minutes and 20 seconds of the third quarter. Neither team has scored in this quarter. That's Courtney Falke, and she drew a foul. Last bucket we had was with 1:31 to go in the first half by Ginger Crider. And both teams have stepped up their defensive intensity. The neither team is getting good looks at the basket. So right now, field goal shooting is a problem for Rochester and Heritage Christian. Bridal commits his second personal. This is Riley Carr. There's Courtney Felke. When Tony Stasiak says it's our leader. Interesting story about Felke. After last year's regional loss, she redecorated her bedroom and put the final score on her wall to remind her daily of what she wanted to do the next year, and she's brought her team to the state finals. And the short jump does not go by Jamie Former, but she's fouled in the act of shooting. The penetration by Audrey Rowe. One of the things Rochester does very well is attack the basket. They did that in the first quarter, but then have struggled ever since. The foul committed by Steph Bowler. We've got a timeout with exactly five minutes to go in the third quarter, and neither team has scored in this third period. I think Rochester looking to write that by attacking the basket in that time. Aubrey Rowe takes it strong to the baseline, draws the defense, and is able to get the ball to Jamie Fornal. I'm sure Tony Stasiak is talking about, remember what got us here, girls. We've got to, we've got to attack the basket. We've got to play an attacking style on the defensive end and the offensive end because that's their game. On the other hand, Heritage Christian, they're very good at getting the ball inside. And when they do, they shoot the ball very well. This afternoon, they are not shooting it very well. 7 for 24, so ball 29%. They're 0 for 3 in this quarter. And Rochester, not much better. 6 for 24, 25%, 0 for 2 in this quarter. Heritage Christian is independent. Rochester plays in the Three Rivers Conference. Rochester also had a great year last year, as did Heritage Christian. Rochester 22 and 3 last year, sectional chance. Heritage Christian 23 and 2 a year ago. Heritage Christian 21 and 5 this season. Rochester 24 and 2. So Jenny Formal makes them both. Those are the first two points of the third quarter. And Rochester leads by three. Rochester picking up full court in a diamond cross, 1-2-1-1, one, 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 trying to get something going here. Usually the defensive end is where you want to start your transition. So if they can get something going, either a turnover or a defensive rebound, the Zebras can, the Zebras can get their offense going. There it is, Christian Ball, trailing by three. It has been a defensive struggle. That's Ginger Trider. 
Do you think, as they go down low to Anna Richards, Anna blocking the foul. Jane, do you think we'll continue at this pace the rest of the game or things will open up? Well, I'm sure both coaches made the adjustments. As you see, trying to get the ball into Richards, that was one of the adjustments Dr. Mark Richards wanted to make. And Courtney Felke coming over to try to help, picks up the blocking foul on the center. It is Heritage Christian ball. There's Cassie Freeman. He spots the open person underneath, Lauren Hafner. <laughs> Hafner has been left wide open all afternoon. That's part of Rochester's defensive game plan to cover up Freeman and Richards. They've left Hafner to roam free, and that time she gets a free for a wide open layup. Here is Courtney Felke with 3.55 to go in the third quarter. Rochester by a point. Hafner two or six from the floor. Felke off the pick for three. For the rebound, we'll pause for these words. You're watching the C Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. Rochester leading 19 to 18, 343 to go. We're in the third quarter in our first game today. Tri Central won its second straight 1A championship, defeating Washington Catholic 46 36. Rochester pressing in the backcourt. Riley Carr committed the last personal before the timeout. It is Heritage Christian ball, and they beat the press. Let's see what the call is. I thought we might get a traveling call, but there's a foul. Heritage Christian did a pretty good job of breaking that press that time. However, Jamie Fornall dangerous pass there to Hannah Richards flying down the lane. That is definitely not Richards' game, nor is it Heritage Christian. They like to set it up in the half-court set, but they're able to attack the basket that time because of Rochester pressing. That's Lindsey Dishman checking in for Rochester. Richards back out to Steph Fulber. Heritage Christian down by one, 19 to 18. As we mentioned earlier, Rochester came in averaging 64 points a game, the highest of any of the teams in the state finals. Heritage Christian averaging 55 points a game. Traveling the call. The turnover department. Heritage Christian eight, Rochester seven. That's about even. Courtney Felke with a nice pass inside. No basket. No basket. Follows the fire to the shot. Talked about Courtney Felke's overall game. She is not shooting the basketball very well today. Only three for 11 on the afternoon. However, as you see there, she could have picked up the assist had they not called the foul before. She has the potential to get her teammates the basketball when she is not shooting it well herself. Lauren Hafner committed the personal. It is Rochester ball. 2.54 to go in the third quarter. But they worked it down low. They were hoping that Cassie Graves would cut to the basket. Here's a long three. And the rebound is taken by Freeman off Felky's missed shot. Felky trying to intercept the pass, knocks the ball out of bounds. Good defensive play by Felky. She reads it very well. She is excellent off-ball defender. She steps in front, nearly gets a steal, but just a half step too late. Here's Ginger Cridle. Richards. That is her third personal team. Rochester wanting to get Freeman into foul trouble. Kathy Greaves steps up and takes that charge, and Freeman lowers her shoulder a little bit, throws her elbow, and Greaves falling down.
picks up a key foul against the big center. So Hannah Richards with three personals. The question is, does Dr. Mark Richards keep his daughter in the game at this stage? And she's a seasoned veteran. She's got a, she's probably played with foul trouble sometime in this season. And putting it up and in is Cassie Gray with 5 11 freshman. So Rochester leads by three with a minute 45 to go in the third quarter. Reeves has stepped in for Anna Easterday, who's gotten in foul trouble. There's a three that does not go. Good rebound, though, and a turnaround by Ginger Kreidel. has been kind of a quiet, unsung hero here. She's hit a couple jumpers in the first half when Richards was on the bench and Freeman was struggling. Felky with a long three. The follow, though, the putback by Arthur. <laughs> Rochester 23 to 20. There's a three by Kreidel that doesn't go. The rebound into Aubrey Rose's hands. The game getting a little more quicker pace, and you can see Dr. Mark Richards on the sideline does not want that. Beautiful pass inside, and Cassie Graves scores again. I'm out. 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. A good timeout by Dr. Mark Richards. Rochester leading 25-20. Pace getting up and down. Courtney Felke a lot of times drives their transition. She makes great penetration and a great bounce pass down inside to Kathy Greaves. Greaves has scored their last four points and she took the, the charge that has really fueled this run for the Zebras. They had struggled offensively for about a 10-minute span at the end of the second quarter and the beginning of the third quarter, but here in the late third quarter, they've stepped up and got their lead out to 25 to 20. Because of the lack of scoring, those four quick points the Zebras scored look mighty big. Definitely, and you can tell they like to play a full court game on the defensive and offensive end. This pace favors the Zebra, and I'm sure Heritage Christian has got to be talking about we need to slow this down and get it back to a had half court game. We had four baskets within the last 52 seconds. There was only one basket in the first six minutes of the, th the third quarter. So definitely, uh, we, uh, we quadruple our offensive output here. <laughs> It's amazing how that can just change the complexion of the game. And right now, the big momentum shift to the Rochester Zebras. And that note courtesy of our ace, Tim Bork, the outstanding statistician we have here. Gene Schott and I, Bork, saw Rook Tim and executive producer, Dennis Casey. Here's Ginger Kreidel. Right now, Heritage Christian comes out with a set play. With the ball inside to Richards, they double down. Rochester does. She kicks it out, but they can't get the score. Steph Foley missed his shot, but Heritage Christian maintains possession. 25 seconds left in the quarter. The Lady Eagles are down by three. Kreidel, and that pass is intercepted by Felky, but in so doing, she committed the personal. So second foul, so not a factor. The only thing it does is stops the momentum a little bit for the Zebras. They've got to stay on the defensive end, and Heritage Christian, still trying to close this gap, gets another chance on the offense. We mentioned the general manager of TV40, Keith Passens, here today, and his son Brady goes to Heritage Christian High School. Steph Foley. There's a long three. a little by Bree Jones, but it didn't go in, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Rochester 25, Heritage Christian 20. You're watching the C-Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. We begin this fourth quarter as you look at Dr. Mark Richards, the head coach of Heritage Christian. 25-20 Rochester. And Rochester has the ball. Rochester won its first semi-state this year. They won regional championships in 1976 and 77. And as Jane mentioned earlier, Heritage Christian only in its second year in the IHSAA. Belkney misses the shot. Well, I am very impressed. 
only their second year in the IHSAA, but they have an incredible crowd here. Rochester does as well, but we see a sea of blue right in front of us because Heritage Christian faithful, are half of them standing up trying to propel their team to get back in this basketball as they trail by five. We got a glimpse of Tony Stasiak, the head coach of Rochester a moment ago. And Heritage Christian plays a terrific schedule. They're in 2A. They defeated seven 4A schools during the season. Beat Arlington twice. Work it down low. They're followed by Hannah Richards. Richards is a force inside. She is having a very, very good game. It's 25-22 in favor of Rochester. Jenny Forno. Fouls on Bree Jones. With 7.02 to go in the game. Dr. Mark Richards. In his fourth year as head coach of Heritage Christian. Well, his daughter has 10 points. She has really stepped up her offense. Cassie Freeman. Richards got the first double figure scorer in the game at 10. And a nice move by Aubrey Rowe. The shot rimmed the basket. Out of bounds to Rochester. 6.54 to go in this one. Aubrey Rose had a couple of nice drives for dishes, and that was almost a basket for her. She has been very aggressive on the offensive end, attacking the basket. Riley Carr back in for Rochester, replacing Lindsey Dishman. Rochester's biggest lead, seven. Harris Christian has not won it. Great basket there by Jamie Formal. Jamie Formal hitting. And that's her 10th point of the game, so she has definitely stepped up here for the Zebras. It is Heritage Christian ball. Ginger Cradle with it. There's Richards. And a three doesn't go by Steph Colvin. Timeout is called. No, they say she was out of bounds. They say that Green Jones was out of bounds before she called the timeout. Heritage Christian has yet to hit a three-point shot. They're 0 for 8 on the afternoon. They just cannot get one to drop. And as a team, Rochester 1 for 9, not much better. But both teams not that poor of shooters from the three-point line necessarily. Rochester's 39% from the three. Heritage Christian 33%. And now Rochester has opened up a seven-point lead, equaling its biggest lead of the game. Bucky's been pretty quiet. She had those nine points pretty early in the first half. And a terrific defensive play, but a fine play at the other end as well. And a foul. Riley Carr with a steal, making the excellent play, and a nice play by Cassie Freeman at the other end. Well, Riley Carr, a very promising young player for Tony Stasiak and the Zebras. She's been very quiet this afternoon. It's taken her three quarters to step up, but a very good pass inside. It's deflected, but she gets it on the rebound there and takes it hard to the basket, drawing the foul. So she gets an opportunity to go to the free throw line where she is a 70% shooter. She knocks down the first one. A nine to two run, and now Rochester has an eight point lead. The biggest lead of the game. And we have 5.31 to go. I remember Riley Carr as a young player in junior high because she came to a basketball camp that I was coaching at. And I knew she had a lot of promise, not only because of her basketball prowess, but because of her attitude and her heart. And that's showing up here this afternoon. Here's Ginger Cradle going all the way. And the way, and she's got it. And that's a very important basket here. Well, they're trying to keep it close. They cannot let Rochester get too far away because Rochester's got great guard play. If you have great guard play and a, a lead at the end, you can hold the basketball. Heritage Christian's going to try to keep it and chip away at that lead. 
Field. Courtney Fecky hits the jumper. Tough for the Eagles to keep it close when you got Courtney Felky on the floor. Big time players step up and make big time plays. That was a great shot by the guard. She's got 13 points. She's averaging 22 a game. And a foul against Cassie Graves of Rochester with 4.51 to go. There's Dr. Mark Richards. Spinning and shooting is Cassie Freeman and a foul. Good move by Freeman. She has got to step up here in the last four and a half minutes of this game. If Heritage Christian is going to keep it close and have a chance to win, she has been extremely quiet. Two for ten from the field today, over two from the three-point line. She has four points as she's gotten her way to the free throw line. And she does so again on that move to the basket, but she misses the, the first. 4.48 to go. There's a substitution. You see Lauren Hafner back in for Heritage Christian, replacing Bree Jones. Heritage Christian now picking up for court man to man. And they beat the, pre they beat the press. And the rejected shot by Ginger Friedel at 5 feet 7. I've been very impressed with Friedel this afternoon. She has stepped up her game on the offensive end and the defensive. She made a great block on that transition. Would have been a basket for the Zebras. So Tony Stasiak, the head coach for Rochester a moment ago, that pass whipped inside and a great play by Cassie Freeman. Bridal for three. It's a long one. There is a foul. It is on Steph Foley. So Foley commits the first one. Good possession for Heritage Christian that time. They probably could have worked to get a little bit better shot. Bridal's three-point shot was about three feet behind the line. That's a tough shot to make. Comes up short on that, and when Rochester gets the rebound, they're able to secure it, get it out, draw the foul on the Eagles. Kelke makes the free throw. Thank you. Thank you. Rochester, a great free throw shooting team, especially this afternoon. They're nine for nine on the afternoon. They tip in at nearly 70% of the team. Pretty good. And that is a big, big key. Why they're ahead by 10, 35 to 25 with 4:19 to go. And around tournament time, free throw shooting always becomes a factor in almost every game. You've got to be able to step up and hit the three shots. Heritage Christian, three of five from the free throw line. So there's a big difference. That's the difference in the game at the free throw line now. Out of bounds, off the hands of Steph Foley. Well, and Rochester cranking up their defensive intensity, led by their leader, Courtney Felke. She had nine points in the first three and a half quarters, and she has six points here in this fourth quarter. So she has definitely risen to the occasion that's helped her team get a 10-point lead. Rochester's turned it over seven times. Heard it's tripped 11 times. Out of we'll pause for these wide words. You're watching with C-Sports on the IHSAA Television Network. We have 3.58 to go, and Rochester has opened up a 10-point lead. There it is, 35-25, Gene. Well, they, the score was 21-20, Rochester with 1.30 left to go in the third, and since then they have gone on a 14-5 run to open this game up. They've done it with defensive pressure and getting out in transition for some easy baskets, led by Courtney Felke, their All-State guard, who is just exceptional, especially down the stretch. Prido. Here's a three that is scored by Cassie Freeman. That is exactly what Aaron Christian needs. Well, Freeman's been way too quiet for this game. She needs to step up offensively, get the basketball in her hands,
because her teammates have got to get it to her in a spot that she can score, and that's exactly what they just did there to cut the lead to eight. I stand corrected. It was a two. It was deep in that corner, but it was a two by Freeman. Now Heritage Christian going to try to dip into this lead. By, by fouling, but you do not want to foul Courtney Selfie. She shoots 85% from the free throw line. She's a senior guard who's had a tremendous amount of experience. She's going to be cool in this situation as she hits the first one. Ginger Cradle committed the personal. Oops. That's the first free throw that Rochester's missed. Here's Cassie Freeman. Had made 11 straight. They're 11 of 12 from the line. Freeman. Richards. And the rebound into Jamie Formal's hands. Here is Rochester. The ball's lost. Aubrey Lowe, Lowe lost possession. Rochester's ahead by nine as Ginger Crito makes the move to the hoop. You can see Rochester wanting to take some time off the clock as they have a nine-point lead with three minutes to go. Tony Stasiak trying to get his team to slow down. And that happened. Off the road, she relaxed just enough for Heritage Christian to come in and grab that steal. When they did grab that steal, they were able to get out down the floor. Ginger Cridle stepped in up her game this afternoon. Takes it hard to the basket, and she finds herself at the free throw line. Riley Carr committed the personal. So Cridle, a 75% free throw shooter, makes that. You saw Bree Jones, number 42, check in for Heritage Christian. Cridle makes a goal. Coach Richards making some defensive substitutions. Bree Jones, a little bit probably better defender than his daughter in terms of if you want to put pressure on and try to get some steals. And so she comes in trying to make something happen. There is Courtney Felke, 2.45 to go. Rochester ahead by seven. Felke. There's Riley Carr. They're moving the ball around nicely. They're in no hurry. They're up by seven. 2.25 left. All right, what does Heritage Christian do defensively? Do they foul? Well, we just answered that question. Well, she definitely was not trying to foul because the person she fouled, again, Courtney Felke, 85% free throw shooter. They were trying to get a steal or force a turnover. Perhaps a little bit early to foul, but as you near the two-minute mark, you've got to do something, either trap. They've extended their 1-2-2 half-court defense out a little bit, and that's why Ginger Cridal picked up a foul because she was out there guarding the point. Unfortunately, though, that is Ginger Cridal's fifth foul, and that's a big foul because she has been an offensive presence for the Eagles this afternoon. And you can tell how disappointed she is. 2.21 to go. Rochester leading by seven. Rochester never has trailed. Never has trailed. Led the entire game. We had one tie in this game at four. On several occasions, Heritage Christian cut the lead to one with the ball, but never could get over the top. Basketball is a game of runs, and both teams have had their runs. Usually the victor is the team that can sustain the runs and put together one of their own. Rochester has done that very well this afternoon, jumping out to a 13-6 lead. Heritage Christian closed that at the half. But then Rochester finally getting their offense going again in the third quarter. Courtney Felke made both free throws, and Cassie Freeman has a four field goal at the other end for Heritage Christian. It is Rochester ball. Here's Courtney Felke with a minute 55 to go. 
And Rochester ahead by seven. Rochester's going to keep the ball in the hands of Riley Carr and Courtney Felke. Their two best free throw shooters, their two best ball handlers. Jamie Forno up top, just setting screens for them, trying to run out that clock so that Heritage Christian does not have time to go down and cut into this deficit. Courtney Felke at the line. That's the first one she's missed today. Check, check that. The second one she's missed. She's made a lot of them. She's made a whole bunch. Oh, she have said that. <laughs> the old proverbial jinx on the free throw shooter. She's made seven. She is seven of ten from the line. And Courtney Funky has the ball again with a minute and a half to go. She's fouled by Cassie Freeman. Rochester head coach Tony Stasiak gives Courtney Felke high marks in life. I think she's one of the best players in the state. And as good a basketball player as she is, she's an even better person. Uh, the highest compliment I could give her is that I've got a daughter who's five years old and is in the program a lot. And if she can be the, uh, the type of person who will coach the court and on and off the court, I'll consider myself truly blessed. Uh, you know, she is a leader. She spends countless hours in the gym. Uh, she was driven to get us to this point. Uh, last year after we lost in the region, we a heartbreaker. Uh, she redecorated the room and put the scoreboard from the region up and painted that to the wall for a constant reminder. And, you know, she's driven. She's, she's in the gym all the time. Uh, and, and it's just worked, worked really hard to get to this point. Uh, she led the volleyball team to a state of this year. And uh, that really got the momentum rolling in Rochester, particularly for girls' basketball program to get back here as well. And, and uh, you know, she is uh, a one-questioned character off the court, a member of the FCA, uh, is, is just a tremendous person and a tremendous student athlete, and really, I think, typifies what any coach would want in the play. That is Tony Stasiak talking about talking about Courtney Felke, who's got 11 points in this fourth quarter. During the interview, she made two free throws. She's truly a special athlete, you know. You can just see the determination she plays this game with, the passion she plays, and all the things that Tony Stasiak said about her is very evident in the way she plays this game. Jimmy Forno committed the personal. Now it is Rochester ball. With 108 to go. And Rochester in command ahead 40 to 31. And there's a good look at Courtney Felton, who is bound to the University of Evansville, headed to the Pocket City. I think the thing that impresses me most about Felton's game is, sure, she's an excellent scorer, but she also has all the other attributes. She's gotten a couple steals that were very critical this afternoon. She averages six assists a game. She gets her teammates involved, and that's what they always say. Great players make everybody around them better, and she is that. She typifies that type of player. That is the essence of the game of basketball, to bring out the best in your teammates. 58 seconds to go. Richards is deep. It counts a foul for Hannah Richards. Heritage Christian still has hopes of trying to cut into this lead. Hannah Richards makes a nice move inside. She's been able to score at will this afternoon against a smaller Rochester team. And then Heritage Christian's been able to get her the basketball. Jenner Easterday committed the personal. And a whistle with 53 seconds to go in the game. Interesting stat, Rochester had 25 points in the first three quarters, 17 points in the fourth quarter. Part of that is due to the free throws that Heritage Christian, the Eagles have put them on the, the receivers on the line trying to cut into this deficit on the one hand, but part of the fourth quarter was when Rochester opened up their lead. In the offensive end, they really got their transition going, and their defense stepped up big. Cassie Freeman committed the personal. And it is a 10-point lead for the Zebras. Jamie Formal stepping up very well this afternoon. She's got 12 points. She averages six points a game. 
And Kelsey Freeman hits a jumper. So they cut it to eight with 37 seconds to go. And here's a foul. A nice shot by Freeman on the other end. She's an excellent player and has really struggled shooting the ball in the first half particularly, but has come on here in the fourth quarter. She, uh, she is now in double digits with 11 points. 35 seconds to go. Good look at Aubrey Rowe, a 5'8 senior. Averaging 8.7 a game. Rochester in the fourth quarter. 14 for 17. Check that. Make that 15 for 18. In the fourth quarter. Excellent job at the free throw line to preserve their lead. Here's Hannah Richards. A long one. Whoa! She was four feet behind the line with a little bit of defensive pressure. Showing her range. But unfortunately for the Eagles, maybe a little too late. They needed that a little earlier as they are still down by seven points. That was a three which cut the seven with 22 seconds to go in the game. Aubrey Rowe hits another one. In Seco Fieldhouse. the fourth year the girls state finals have been at Consigo. So Aubrey Rowe drains a couple more. She's hit four free throws in the last minute. And it's all but over now. Anna Richards missing. And this town in Fulton County, Rochester, will be celebrating very, very shortly. 11 seconds to go. They are mighty happy. They're right behind us. And you can see the look and the smiles of these fans and the happiness that this team has brought to this community. Well, both communities on their feet. Rochester, a small community. Obviously, it's a big thing for their teams to get to the state finals and to win it behind the presence of Courtney Felty. As she hits the free throw, it's quite an accomplishment. Give credit to Heritage Christian as both teams clear their benches. Casico Fieldhouse is extremely loud because everybody cheering for their team, winners and losers alike, as a Heritage Christian comes off the floor and obviously disappointment on their faces because of the loss. And Rochester a little bit different on the other end of the court. Very excited because they're about to get their first state title. Courtney Felky hits a goal. Tony Stasier is fourth year head coach of Rochester. And they are 11 seconds away. They're ahead by 11, which is their biggest lead of the game. Four seconds. And a foul with 1.7 seconds to go. Rochester scored 25 points in the first three quarters, and they've scored 25 points in this quarter in the fourth quarter alone. They really stepped up their play, led by Courtney Felke, but the rest of the team, I thought, did an excellent job. You know, Tony Stasiak talked about how deep his team was. He goes nine deep, and everybody just contributes. We saw that on the defensive end, as well as on the offensive end, and they come up with the victory. That is Nicole Rausch, a 5'7 freshman at the line, as mentioned earlier, the daughter of Jeff Rausch. General manager, Tom Rausch, Lincoln Mercury Mazda. That will count. That basket counts by Courtney Turner, and that is it. The celebration is beginning for the Rochester Zebras. Very good ball game this afternoon. Both teams playing extremely hard. Both teams having great seasons. You hate for somebody to have to lose with how exceptional both teams are. But at the same time, give credit to Rochester. They really stepped up their play late in the game, even though they weren't shooting the ball early on very well. They found a way to get it done and come up with a big win this afternoon. You're watching the C Sports on the IHSAA television network.
All right, post game had to be a pretty exciting time. The Zebras had just won their first state championship. Uh, which, what's a memory you have of uh, just after the game? What was your first thought? Well, it's all a blur. The first thing is we did it, mm -hmm. and what's next? You know, there, that's that's the weirdest feeling of all. Of that whole thing is there's not the next game. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was, oh, we won this. Who we play next weekend, or what do we got, or what's the next game plan? But at that moment, it, it's a weird feeling. Uh, it's celebratory, of course, but still, it's like there's no more next opponent. This is as far as we mm -hmm. can go, and that's unusual. A lot of things went on. I mean, they, they IHSA pulls you right away. There's an interview room. There's the media. Uh, unfortunately, because of time restraints, they don't let the, all the kids climb the ladder and cut down the net, which is unfortunate. The mm -hmm. seniors had to go up and cut down the entire net by themselves and bring it down as one whole unit uh, because they want to do all the award ceremonies and everything, I think, and you know, mm -hmm. they know it kind of takes a while sometimes. Uh, I think they do that particularly more so for the morning games, you know, the 1A game because they're trying to get on schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, but so that's a little bit different. Uh, and then I was gone from the team for, man, at least once after we took the picture on the podium and got the awards, I was gone for about a half hour um, because of all the different media requests and the press conference and all those kind of mm -hmm. things, which are kind of cool. But, you know, you just want to get back to your team. Sure. And, uh, you know, as I got back there, finally, they were waiting for me, thankfully. And, uh, you know, we just look around the room and we're just like, we did it. Mm -hmm. We did it. But they all said the same thing. They're like, this is a weird coach. There, there's no tomorrow. There's mm -hmm. nothing. You know, it's kind of sad because you realize this is the end of a team, mm -hmm. as we know it, a group that had worked so hard that, that this was it. And then the other thing is we go as a group and as you go to Conseco, we were in the locker room, so we had to take the elevator up to the that uh, open area as you enter Conseco before you go into the gym that, that uh, right. where the ticket booths and things are. And I think everybody from Rochester stayed, and that was, that was phenomenal. They wouldn't let us celebrate on the court, but in that area that became sort of the Rochester pep rally of the immediate time. And, you know, all the players could take their pictures with the trophy and their parents, and everybody was there. And uh, you know, that was kind of a, a neat environment to have right there uh, as the game was over, too. That, uh, yeah, that was that was one great moment. Um, Courtney Felke won the Mental Attitude Award. Um, that had to be a, a, a nice. That's a nice day for Rochester. You win the state championship, and then you get the Mental Attitude Award. That's that's a good day. <laughs> that, that's a great day, and not. A, I mean, that. That's a kid who the mental attitude was meant for. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, all the things that she did, uh, the class act of a person that she is, um, you know, one, as for much as she got the spotlight, she always wanted to defer and credit to her teammates. Uh, all those countless hours in the gym working on her by herself, um, you know, all the things that you're working hard in the classroom, being a good person, uh, all those things when you think of, uh, you know, how you should be rewarded, uh, the mental attitude was meant for her. And I know, uh, I'm sure Coach Miller would say the same thing, and I know uh, Coach Malco would. You know, we're fortunate to have the mental attitude winners when, when mm -hmm. the three of us went there. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't around when, when the football team went, but, you know, looking at uh, Brody Shane, I would say the same thing, knowing, mm -hmm. you know, that, that that's a neat honor to not only have a state champion, but to have uh, a leader on your team be recognized was, uh, was a great thing. And, of course, with Katie on staff, that made it extra special because you know she was part of that process with us as well and to be there and to not only win a state championship but to share that honor with your daughter was was really really cool and uh, I know a little bit about like that was because I watched the uh, post game and uh, my favorite picture for me uh, after that is uh, when I got my medal my daughter Keaton was in kindergarten and she was up there on the podium with me and I kind of know how that feels and that that's that's kind of an awesome feeling to have so much family around and that's been part of our program ever since I've been here and to have family be really recognized and get to enjoy that that was that was a super neat thing too okay well coach it's been a pleasure re, uh, reliving these past glories of 2004 um, I'm sure it never gets old for you to talk about but uh, that was one magical year not only for you and your team but also the community of Rochester so uh, thanks well yeah it's it's hard to believe I mean that's that's March of 2004 and here we are in December of 2012 and uh, you know, every every year, every challenge is different, but it doesn't. Some days it seems like it was just a couple of years ago, and of course, when you don't have the season as you want, or some of those things, mm -hmm. it's you've been there, you know what that feeling's like. Uh, but also at the same time, you realize that each group you have, even beyond there, each each journey's different, and uh, you know, I, I, it was special to have. You know, there's a lot of coaches better than I am that never had that opportunity, so I never take it for granted. And I'm just thankful that uh, that group of young people that could work hard and meet that goal, and you wish that uh, more groups could experience that because it's truly special. Great. Well, thanks for your time, Coach. Thanks. Appreciate it, Eric.